How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I think we can all agree that long drawn out intros on YouTube are unnecessary and boring on the most part. So let's get straight into this one. The video that I'm watching today and hoping to give some sort of enlightenment on was uploaded by a group called Anti Predator on YouTube. It says that the video was originally uploaded by a group called Pop Squad. I don't know if they're affiliated with each other, but the link to the original video that I'm watching will be in the description down below. So without any further hesitation, let's get into the video. So what's up? Nothing much. Just got out of the way and got to put another two hours ago. Really? That's pretty nice. How, how, um, how long was the walk? Like 20 minutes. 20 minutes? But it felt like longer because I was walking home. Really? Like how far behind the price shop are you going? Maybe like 50, not even like 15 minutes, like 5 minutes away because That's I live right behind his gas station. So the video starts off with who is pretending to be this 14 year old boy that Savannah, the uh, person in this video is meeting, actually confronting her and pretending that he is in fact the 14 year old boy that she believes she was coming to meet. This can go one of two ways. This is a, a more dangerous way of approaching one of these situations. She's already arrived at the meet where she organized to meet this person. So this technically isn't necessary, but because at this point she genuinely feels she is meeting the person that she believes she was meeting, she might say something that she wouldn't say to a different person. So it's a catch-22. It's dangerous because we don't know what she's like, if she's armed, or if she's you know, carrying a knife, a gun, or anything of the sort. But at the same time, it's a way to get further information out of somebody. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Mm How -hmm. you doing this evening? Get I'll take a seat for me. Cameras are rolling right now for your protection and ours. Okay? This is so you can't say that we try to beat you up and, you know, vice versa. All right? Want to sit on this side for me? Then obviously the rest of the group come over, tell her to sit down and basically say the YouTuber's equivalents of the Miranda's rights. Although not placed under um, custody, I don't think you can do that in some states in America, you can in England. So for example, if I meet somebody, I can place them under citizen arrest. Under section 24A of the Criminal and Police Evidence Act, I can basically detain somebody legally until the police arrive. In America, can't really do that. But they explained that they are recording for both of their protection, which is the right way to go about this. Obviously the intent isn't to record for either of their protection, quite clearly it's to make a YouTube video as well, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as all the rest of the protocol is done correctly. Can you speak up a little bit? Just came to walk. You came here to walk? To meet him? Who's him? Yeah, that's his name. How old is Keith? Fifteen. Huh? Fifteen. Try again. Fifteen. Try again. Fifteen. You, you, you're gonna keep saying fifteen? Should I go back to the chat logs? So Savannah starts off this by saying 18 and then continues to say 15 over and over again. I don't think there is a state in America that has the legal consent age of 15, so technically she's admitting to a crime anyway. The person she was attempting to meet was apparently 14 years old. There's not a crazy amount of difference there because it's still an illegal age, but obviously it proves that she's going to be actively trying to lie to make her case seem less bad. Because in some people's heads, 15 is better than 14. Technically, both still crimes in America. In other countries around the world, and even some countries in Europe, both of those ages are actually considered legal for consent. But obviously, we go on a case-to-case -case basis, depending on which country we're in. So before you start trying to lie your way out of this, let's get one thing straight, okay? Number one, the decoy Keith is 19 in real life. Okay. You were chatting to me the entire time from the second you said, so handsome, we need to hook up, right? That was your first two messages, okay? You were chatting to me from that point all the way to sitting right here. Two things jump out of me here. Uh, one, what f***ing 14 year old is called Keith? Like, I, I don't know a single Keith. And no, I know one Keith, he's 62 or 63. Like, it's not a 14 year old's name. If you're a 14 year old called Keith, f***ing comment down below, I'll pin you as top comment because that's mental and I feel bad for you. Secondly, he's mentioned the fact that he was the one that was speaking the entire time, so he's accepted all legal responsibility for this conversation. This means later on down the line, if it turns out that he was entrapping this person, if he was luring this person, or if he was flat out just committing crimes, he has already admitted his responsibility for those, as this person is obviously responsible for the other side of the conversation. You want to try to tell me what you believe the age was again before I have to go back to the chat logs? 
how old is Keith? Said 15. No, he said he turns 15 in April, which would make him what? Okay. Either way, it's wrong. Right? Because how old are you? 20 what? 26. Obviously, at the age of 26, you should fully know your sort of legal position in these circumstances. If this person was, you know, under the age of 18, for example, nothing sh would be done about it in a court of law. And even to the fact that if they were 18 years old, the chances are, again, nothing would be done about it. But because they've admitted that they're in their late 20s, uh, they're completely legally responsible for their actions. Now, I could go back to the chat logs and we could read verbatim. <clears throat> or, you know, you could keep on bullshitting around. One of your first initial questions was, so what are you looking for on here? And Keith was making it clear that he was confused and trying to figure himself out. True or false? Okay. So what else would he be doing on there? You asked that question twice. You asked it when you first met him on the application, and then you asked him when you guys started texting. So you mentioned the fact that one of her first questions was, what are you looking for on here? Legally, there's nothing wrong with that unless she's previously been told the age. And then even then, what are you doing on here doesn't lead to sexual conversation every single time. And there's reasonable doubt that they weren't ensuing that particular thing. If they flat out said, are you looking for sex? Are you looking for a hookup? Then that's different. But because it's, what are you doing on here? It may be the same thing, but because of the legal term, it changes and this might actually prevent them being prosecuted for this particular crime if it was these sort of conversations. Startled still? What was going to happen if there was really a 14-year-old boy here? Or better yet, why do you think that this is okay? So obviously Savannah's staying very quiet, as is her right to do so. There's a way to get these people to speak, and I don't think this person's doing it the right way. He's being too confrontational and I guess this person just doesn't feel comfortable speaking. The idea behind being one of these predator catchers is you have to be good at speaking to these people and getting key bits of information out of them. Otherwise, you know, later on in court, you don't have as much information. And because we can't see the text messages previous to this encounter, we don't know what the conversation was like. They may have explicitly said, I'm coming here to meet you for sex. I'm coming here to meet you for this. But if they haven't, and they haven't admitted it on camera, them ensuing it and making it seem like that's what they were asking for, technically is defamation of character and they could be sued. The whole point of defamation of character is publicly, you know, representing something false as if it's the truth. So if she at any point hasn't said anything sexual and they've presented this video as if she has, they could be sued for that. But obviously meeting a 14 year old when you're 26 still has its own legal issues that she could be arrested for, i.e. kidnapping. You're not in any danger, go ahead. I already knew he was not 15. Oh, okay. So that's why I came here. So that's why you came here. Yes. That's the best you could come up with after staying silent for that long? That is your best? Really? You were talking to me the whole time. So you, you should know that I'm not new to this, okay? I know what I'm doing. I've dealt with quite a few of you already. Obviously that's just some bullshit excuse. Again, we can't see the chat logs. We don't know at what point Savannah was told the age. And again, this is a really important part of the evidence. You have to be told the age within the first portion of the conversation. Because if there's a long portion of conversation and then you say the age, they can argue in the court they thought they were just playing around. They just assumed they were 18, they were joking around that they were younger. You have to say at the beginning of the conversation before anything like this happens. Because again, if there's sexual conversation, at that point you then say, hey, I'm a minor, and then there's more sexual conversation. The sexual conversation just doesn't mean anything. And it's quite easy to argue with a good lawyer that you just thought they were lying. Especially if the main account that you first spoke to them on said that they were in fact over the age. To be exact, you're actually number 14 in just over a month. So you could imagine how many times I heard that. You want to try again? This always confuses me when people can do so many catches in a month. I maybe confront three or four people each month, maybe less, sometimes a little bit more. But between that sort of 
amount. You've got to remember that each one of these conversations takes up a lot of time. It takes up a lot of resources and it takes up a lot of everything, really. For example, if I catch somebody and I go to the police, I spend a day or two doing interviews and giving my statements. If you're doing 14 catches a month already, which maybe ensures that there's more days left in the month, how are you having the time to do all of these, message these people constantly, and also do all these police statements? It just doesn't seem like you could do the job properly and also do this many catches. You're not gonna tell me that you knew he was 15, or wasn't 15, that, that's not the truth. How many times have you done this? Never done it. Never done it. You know how many times I heard that one too, right? This is true. Everybody says it's their first time. If a hundred people say it's their first time, what are the chances that all a hundred are saying the truth? Unlikely. So she might be telling the truth, she might be lying. Later on, we can prove that if it does go to court. What if I was his father? Or his uncle? Do you think cameras would be rolling? For your protection? <clears throat> Better yet, do you think we'd be having a conversation? So this is a major legal f up. And it's quite a shame, really, because everything beforehand seemed relatively professional. Even though they haven't explicitly said that they would do bodily harm to this person, they've ensued it. Saying something like this will make this person feel under duress. They'll feel scared at the thought of being attacked if it wasn't these people. And just that alone, that amount of duress on this person can throw the case out. Because again, they could say in court, I was scared for my life because they threatened me. And technically it's true. Although it's not a direct threat, depending on the jury, depending on the judge, depending on how good your lawyer is, this could easily be construed as a threat. It's um, quite obvious what they're implying at, and the only reason that they would say something like this is to what, make them feel uncomfortable. Yes or no? No. You can instantly see that the body language of this person has changed. She was being quiet before, but she was making eye contact. She was looking up, and now you can see that she's visibly more scared. She's hunched in, she's looking down, you can tell. And this one little thing may even throw this entire case out. And it's a shame that people, it's just, it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. You had a lot to say when we were chatting. Why are you so quiet now? You got all freshened up and everything to come meet a 14 year old boy. And now you have nothing to say. I find that odd. I don't find it odd at all. If you confront somebody with something that they didn't expect was gonna happen, for example, if anyone's ever seen Darren Brown, he does this thing where he shakes people's hands, covers their face with their hand, and they sort of fake. When something goes against what people are thinking is gonna happen, there's two things that people do. They either run and get scared and chat it, or they just freeze like a deer in headlights. This person is just frozen like a deer in headlights, and it's easily explainable. Well, you could start your walk home. We do have to film you leaving. So if you don't have anything else to say for yourself, after you. So without calling the police, without doing anything the right way, in fact, they just let this person go home go home to their laptop, to their phone, and delete evidence of every other case that they may be a part of. Delete all of the indecent images of photos that they may have installed. Do all of this stuff and cover up crimes that they may have committed because of your decision not to go to the police. I know that a lot of the predator catching groups are told not to call the police. And I know a lot of them are told to email the evidence over instead. But there's been no mention of the police throughout this video. The police weren't called, they weren't threatened to be, nothing. It's just, let's grab some content and let it go home. We've got another video this month, that's the 15th. Yeah, 15th in 30 days. This is why they This is why they have the ability to do it because they're not spending a day or two doing statements to police stations. That's how you can do this many cases. I was wondering before and it makes sense now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Savannah 26. 
came out to meet with what he believed was a 14 year old boy. And we let them walk home and delete evidence of any other crime that they may be committing. See you guys in the next one in two days. Peace. Everything was relatively well done and professional until the point that they basically alluded to threatening this person and then obviously let them go home without calling the police. You don't know what this person's gonna do, if they're gonna commit when they get home, if they're gonna do seriously serious bodily damage to themselves or other people in their house in a manic episode because they've just been caught doing something like this or if they're gonna go home and delete the evidence of all these other things or they're gonna go home to a kid that they've actually got there that they've kidnapped. You need to call the police, I can't stress that enough.